So let's talk about Java semaphores. And we'll start out first by talking about the concept of semaphores, and then we'll talk about how those concepts are actually applied in Java. And I also will give you an understanding of the two different types of semaphores, counting semaphores and binary semaphores. And I've already mentioned this before, but we'll talk briefly about a human known use of semaphores. So what is a semaphore? A semaphore is conceptually an object, using that word somewhat loosely here, that can be atomically incremented and decremented to control access to a shared resource. And originally semaphores were designed to control access to things like shared railroad tracks. We don't have a lot of railroads in the US anymore, sadly, because they're very convenient in a lot of ways, but they're very widely used in Europe, they're very widely used in India, they're very widely used in Asia, and a lot of times they'll be shared tracks because you can't have double tracks everywhere. So you'll have one track and you need to make sure that two trains don't share that same track because they'll collide into each other and cause a problem. So railway semaphore signaling mechanisms are used to indicate when the track is in use and you need to stop and when the track is clear and you can go. So those are the, the two values, stop and clear. Concurrent programs use semaphores to coordinate interactions between multiple threads. And that's exactly what you do in your programming assignment 1B. So this particular example is going to use uh, Grateful Dead wine bottles. I'm not advocating people drink wine. I'm not advocating people drink Grateful Dead wine, but uh, there's a reason for this. And if you click on the link, you'll see that there's a song that talks about sharing. So that's, that's why we have Grateful Dead wine bottles by the Grateful Dead. And so we're going to use a semaphore to control access of multiple threads to a limited number of resources, in this case, the wine bottles. So a semaphore records a count, which is referred to in Java as the permits count of how many units of a resource are available. In this case, how many wine bottles do we have? And it also provides operations that will atomically adjust this permit count as units are acquired or released. So let's say somebody wants to drink a glass of wine, so they have to acquire a bottle. And as long as the semaphore count is greater than zero, you can get one of the bottles. And then another person wants to drink another glass of wine, so they have to get another bottle. And then finally, all three bottles are being used. Now at that point, when the value of the semaphore is zero, Anybody else who wants to acquire the resource, who wants to drink a glass of wine, is unable to do so because the count is zero. Everything is in use. Now, when a thread or a person is done with the resource, the permit count is incremented atomically and another waiting thread can acquire it. So when someone's done drinking, they give back the bottle and the count atomically goes back to one. This particular example fully brackets the acquisition and the release of the permits or the wine bottles or the count, whatever you want to call it. In particular, the thread that acquires a semaphore is the same as the one that releases it. We will see that there's other scenarios where that is not the case. There are two types of semaphores. One type are counting semaphores, which have a permit number it's defined by a counter n with a very precise meaning. So if the value of the counter is negative, that means there's a certain number of threads, minus n threads, that are queued up waiting to acquire the semaphore. If the value is zero, it means that there's no waiting threads. However, if you want to acquire the semaphore, you're gonna block and that'll decrement the count by one. And then finally, the value could be positive, meaning that there are no waiting threads and if an acquire operation wants to get one semaphore or multiple semaphores as long as the count stays positive, then the acquiring operation will not block. Now, the implementation of the semaphore may not precisely align with these three states, negative, positive, and zero. They may implement it slightly differently, but the, the effect is the same. Binary semaphores are much simpler. They're an all or nothing proposition. They have only two states acquired and not acquired. So acquired is typically, it means it's zero, the value is zero. Not acquired means the value is one, so it means it's available or free. 
and we can restrict the counter n to the values 0 or 1. In practice, binary semaphores are actually often implemented by accounting semaphores that just restrict the values to 0 or 1. Some languages, some libraries define binary semaphore separately from counting semaphore. Java does not. They use a semaphore class that could be used as a binary or counting semaphore. We'll talk a lot more about these types of semaphores later. The assignment that you're doing uses a counting semaphore. And so it's going to have a count, which is the number of palantiri. You can see here, for example, we have three palantiri and five beings. And so that's going to then mediate access to stuff. This application, this assignment, also demonstrates the use of fully bracketed semaphores because the thread that acquires the semaphore must be the one to release it. There's a different example that we'll take a look at later when we get a little further along, which is the ping pong app. And that uses a pair of binary semaphores instead of one counting semaphore. And it uses the binary semaphores to let the threads take turns pinging and ponging. And so this particular example application demonstrates non-bracketed semaphores. One semaphore acquires, or one thread acquires a semaphore, and then it releases the other semaphore and vice versa. And that's how we're able to ping and pong back and forth. So let's talk a little bit about human known uses of semaphores. A good example of a human known use of semaphores is to schedule access to beach volleyball courts. I think I talked about this before. If you go to Corona Del Mar State Park, you can see an example of this. And uh, it'll illustrate the point where you have a bag full of balls that's used to limit the number of teams that can concurrently play volleyball. So that's the end of the introduction to Java semaphores.